All right, in this video we're going to see how to solve a linear system that has three equations and three variables. And of course you can use these techniques to solve a higher order system, a linear system with n equations and n variables where n is any whole number bigger than three. And we're going to focus on the three by three system. I have an example on the right of first equation 2x minus y plus 3z equals 17. Second equation negative 5x plus 4y minus 2z equals negative 46. And third equation, 2y plus 5z equals negative 7. So we're going to be using the matrix method to solve this. And the first thing to do is to create a matrix from the system of equations. This just amounts to pulling off the coefficients of the variable terms and the constants and putting them in a rectangular array. So in the first row will be the coefficients from the first equation. Um, we want to have them in columns, so if the equations aren't already where you want to have the column of the x terms, column of the y terms, column of the z terms, and then on the other side of the equal sign, column of the numbers. So we'll have a 2 here, and when there's no coefficient, uh, it's either a positive or negative 1. Since this is subtraction here, that's a negative 1 for y, and then 3 for z and 17 for the constant term. So we'll do the same thing with each of the other equations. So I have negative 5, positive 4, negative 2, and negative 46. Now notice we don't have an x term in the third equation. So when you're missing a variable term, you want to think of the coefficient as being 0, because it's the same as 0x plus. Right? So we'll have 0 for any missing terms, 2 for the y, and 5 for the z, and negative 7. So this is the matrix that goes along with that system of equations. Now we're actually going to use the calculator or technology to solve the matrix. So I'll show you how to do this on the TI-84 graphing calculator and then we can show you how to use a online widget. So we're going to go to the matrix menu, which you do second and the negative one exponent button right under the math button. And we're going to go to the right to edit the first matrix. Um, the beginning you have to specify the size of the matrix. So the first number is the number of rows and the second number is the number of columns. So we have a three row matrix with four columns, three by four. And now we just put those numbers in. So two, enter, negative one, enter, three, enter, 17, enter, negative five, enter, four, enter, negative two, enter, negative 46, enter, 0, enter, 2, oops, 2, enter, 5, enter, negative 7, enter. <coughs> and we need to exit out of this matrix menu. So second mode to quit, get back to the home screen. Now we're going to perform an operation on that matrix that we just created, matrix A. And the operation is known as converting it to reduced row echelon form, or short, RREF. If we go to the same matrix menu, second, negative one exponent, um, if you go to the middle <coughs> column there, the math submenu, these are all operations to perform on a matrix. and uh, if you go down to the bottom to choice B, there is RREF. That's what we want to do. So select that RREF. And then you need to tell it which matrix to do this to. So we'll go back to the matrix menu and we'll pick off the first one, the one we created. Okay? And it'll now convert that. So it's giving us this matrix in return. And if we translate to 
translate that first row into an equation, it's 1x plus 0y plus 0z equals 4. And of course, that's the same as x equals 4. So the first equation tells us x equals 4. Similarly, the second equation tells us y equals negative 6, and the third equation tells us z equals 1. And we can put these in a ordered triplet, parentheses 4, comma, negative 6, comma, 1, parentheses. So oftentimes we'll have to put our answer as an ordered triplet like that. But that's the solution. All right, it's pretty easy. Now suppose you don't have a graphing calculator. You can still calculate this. Um, we'll just do search augmented matrix solver. And when you do that, you get a couple of options. Um, the one I like is the Wolfram Alpha one. That's the third hit that comes up. And you just put the same numbers in here. You don't have to tell it what size. This is set up only for a 3x3, three three, so you can't do this for a smaller or larger system. But go ahead and put these numbers in. 2, negative 1, 3, 17, negative 5, 4, negative 2, negative 46, 0, 2, 5, and negative 7. Once you have those filled out, just hit submit, and the answer shows up at the bottom. Now, one way we might want to validate all this is graphically. And in the same way that we graphed two one-dimensional lines in a two-dimensional plane to solve a two-by-two -two system, we can graph three two-dimensional planes in a three-dimensional space to solve a three-by-three -three system. The free program to use in this case is GeoGebra. And if you go ahead and search GeoGebra online, you want the online one, and it'll come up web.geogebra.org. And you don't have to download or sign in or anything. Open this, let's go to 3D graphics. And we can actually put the equations in and get a 3D graph. Let's just type the equations in as you see them. 2x minus y plus 3z equals 17. So each equation is going to be a two-dimensional plane. Next equation, negative 5x plus 4y. Negative 5x plus 4y minus 2z equals negative 46. And the last one, 2y plus 5 z equals negative 7. All right, now there's a couple problems with this right now. One is that these are all the same color. So let's go ahead and change the colors on some of these. So if you right click on one of these objects, you can change the object properties. And uh, one of the properties, of course, is color. Let's make this one red. And uh, let's make this last one green. So now we can see they're all different. Um, clicking over here to get out of that menu, we can go to not having a um, a grayed XY plane, which kind of gets in the way of the picture as well. And at this point, we should be able to rotate this thing around and find out where these three intersect. All right. So you can see that they actually all cross right around there. Uh, it would be pretty tough to figure out what that point is just from looking at this. But we already know the answer and we just need to validate. And sometimes this thing gets a little stuck. There we go. 
All right, so let's plot the suspected solution, which was 4, negative 6, 1. And then this now shows that that point is, in fact, the solution. So you can see that's where the three planes all intersect. So uh, you now want to take this picture. You can use the snipping tool, and you could snip a picture of this. Alternatively, you can export here without signing in. Let's go up to the menu up here, and hit Export, and choose PNG. And just name it 3D Visual, and that'll export and download as a little image file, which you can then upload or paste or attach somewhere. All right, that's it.